Hello, in this video I want to talk about how did I learn Houdini. This is also a 10k special, so thanks everyone for watching and subscribing to this channel. It's great to see people are finding these videos and tutorials useful, so thank you for that. In the background, what I'm going to talk, uh, I will be making a sci-fi panel. If you want a separate video on that, let me know in the comments and I can upload a video with some more explanation on that. So let's start at the beginning. So how did I start learning Houdini? Or where did I even heard about Houdini in the first place? So this is just to give some context where it all began. So this was a few years back ago when I was still studying digital arts and entertainment. We had to do our bachelor thesis, the end assignment. So this was in the last year of course of the studies before doing uh, our internship. So the assignment, the bachelor thesis itself is about researching a chosen topic. So my topic, of course, being Houdini, which has to be approved by the teachers, uh, was my project. So I had about six weeks time that I could fully spend on researching and learning Houdini. And at the end, I had to do a presentation about what I built with Houdini and so on. This was also the first time that I heard about Houdini while finding a topic for my project. That is the first time I heard and learned about Houdini. So for the project itself, I wanted to do something around world building. So previously in school, we did everything in a more manual way, which is great for learning. But again, like if you place and do everything manual, it's quite time consuming. And I really liked the idea with Houdini that you could speed up certain workflows. With my first research, I found this GTC video uh, that Rob McGee did, and he talked about procedural world building. This was one of my first inspirations and motivations to start learning Houdini. This was a really interesting video which motivated me through the project. Most of this also was self-learned, so we had to research a topic on our own, but also no one around me was also quite experienced in Houdini. So back then, teachers didn't also know that much about Houdini. But now the school has catched up and a lot of teachers have learned Houdini and there are even courses in the school to learn their first steps in Houdini as well. So that was my first project. And for my first project comes also a big talking point, which is starting simple. So I sort of had a rough idea of what, what I wanted to do for my first project, which was around world building. And from that GDC video, I had a good, a good idea or good reference on what could be possible in my first project. So one of the first things to do is, of course, is to learn the basics of Houdini. Like how do I place notes? How do I work with the user interface? And things like that. So for that, I followed some very basic videos here on YouTube. Like again, like how do I play the note, work with interfaces and things like that. So that is a bit of helpful uh, to get some of the basics down. But again, like I'm not sure if I could actually build something and building something really helps you learn things better. So of course, like building things can be based on tutorial or certain information. Like a lot of things here of my first projects are basically based on a certain tutorial or information or combinations. One of the first tools that I started building was a pipe tool. So this was also shown in that GDC video and it shows a full breakdown or a full workflow of making a pipe tool and bringing it into the game engine. I found this a great example uh, because it's a quite simple approach to procedural tools. So it focuses around using the base features and nodes of Houdini, so nothing super fancy or complicated. So you need to learn first what Houdini offers in nodes, like procedural group nodes and things like that. So often people think they need to program knowledge or certain things like that to start with Houdini. I don't think that's necessarily true. Like for example, VAX is sort of like a program language you could use. It's really great if you know how to use it, but it's definitely nothing that you need as a beginner. And I didn't really use VAX in the beginning at all. Like I tried to stay away from that for my first uh, project. So with that first pipe to made, it was great to, to sort of have a full overview of how do I make something and bring it into a game engine. Uh, and the pipe tool didn't take that long to build, especially since I have uh, the GDC video explaining me how things are, how it was done. So further down the project, I made multiple other tools, uh, smaller tools uh, as practice, like for example, the cable tool, a fence tool, stairs tool, uh, ivy tool, and so on. So I made these smaller tools that could help building, uh, generating environments. Then to finish off the project, I also wanted to make a level builder tool based on what you have seen in 
the GTC video. So this is basically you draw a line in a scene and you automatically are starting to place assets down based on the curve. So this is my own version of that one from what you saw in the GTC video. And in the GTC video was a small breakdown of that tool. So I watched the video lots of time and I tried to analyze what was going on. So this is something that I've really spent a lot of time on. So what ideas and concepts have been used to reconstruct and build this. So again, like I spent a lot of time researching things, uh, even though I had a little information, it still gave me direction of where to go. So looking back at it now at these tools, I mean, they're not the best tools out there. They work and they're great for, for like my first tools. But again, they are quite basic and set up and they are built in a certain way. And if you don't use it in that way, they might start breaking along the way. So overall here, start simple, learn the first basics and functionalities of Houdini. Don't immediately try to do something more complicated. Try to first uh, simplify and learn basic concepts and, and get familiar with the notes in Houdini. Also, what I often see people do is that they jump into too big projects too quickly. Like make something that is not too big at first. Like I started with building smaller tools first, like a pipe tool or a cable tool before jumping into a large project. Like don't immediately jump into like full city generation. First jump into something that's smaller, like a small prop or a door or a modular asset. Make something first smaller and manageable so that you could take your time to understand everything. For example, here on my channel, I had like videos about making a procedural Lego brick. That could be something that's quite beginner friendly and to just get in touch with Houdini. Also, if you're very new to Houdini, there is also a free version of Houdini, which is called Houdini Apprentice. So you could just use that for learning. Of course, it has limitations, but for learning, it's, it's great to already get familiar with the software. Next step is my internship and my first job. So after that project was done, the next step in school was to then find an internship for graduation. So what I knew back then is that I wanted to do something more with Houdini. So that was something that I really had in my mind. So since I started working in Houdini in that project, it opens my eyes to working in more procedural and it's quite interesting to have a, a more procedural workflow. So what I find mainly interesting is that in school they teach you a certain workflow, but then for example with Houdini things are getting shifted and things are different. Uh, and I like to see different ways of working since it's quite interesting that you can work in different approaches uh, on a certain model. So then for my internship, I joined Axon. Uh, they are an indie studio making the game Ari and the Secret of Seasons. So the studio itself used Houdini as their main 3D package. So they modeled rigs uh, in Houdini. So in there, I had an opportunity to learn more about Houdini, making some tools, taking my whole modeling workflow from Max into Houdini. And overall, it just helps by improving my skills if this is like a part of your of your work. So when the internship also was then over, uh, I kept working at Exxon for another year, uh, which was really great. It was a cool team to work with. Uh, and also this video gave me some opportunities to go like events like Gamescom or even doing my one of my first talks when I was there, which was also great. So overall, if you have the opportunity to do a certain job or internship with Houdini, that of course will help you uh, learn and grow there. Uh, even back then, when I was looking for an internship, I didn't have any Houdini portfolio pieces. So I only had my work in progress of my first project. So I only had like snippets of my pipe tool and some other tools. I didn't really have like a finished portfolio piece to show. The next thing I want to talk about is sharing your work. This is a quite interesting topic. This is something that helped me learn to grow and also to get more feedback. So in my free time, I started learning more and more Houdini and I also shared those with certain communities or websites. So for example, one of my first house generator while, while I was making this, I would also share this on full account. So I would post updates and improvements on the tool uh, and it was great to then see people giving feedback or the reaction. Uh, and I also noticed that a lot of people wanted to see a breakdown or a tutorial on how I built that tool. So this house generator ended up being one of my first videos here on the channel. Uh, the, you can still watch the video, it's a still it's a bit outdated, uh, but there's still some useful information there. Then also a couple months later after the video, I started doing a art station blog. So this was also to share more my, of my work and also to share that I'm learning new things, that I'm exploring new things. So one of the reasons why I also did the blog is a studio that I was talking to gave me some feedback that I should learn more about facts. 
that was also something that I wanted to do with the blog is to learn more about VEX. So one of the earlier blog posts is about learning VEX from CG Wiki. So I followed a tutorial there, which is called the Joy of VEX, which is really good and I can recommend you that. Also here to sort of like recap, even though I was working in Houdini for over a year, I didn't took VEX seriously. So from that point, I started taking VEX a bit more seriously because I didn't really have a good idea before where I should use it or how I should use it. So now I started to learn more about it and I automatically then had more in my workflow. So overall sharing work can be important to get feedback and to see how people react. I also never know that certain studios are maybe watching your work as well. So that could also be a nice surprise later on. It's also great when you post stuff to sort of see the progress you have made along the way. So you can always look back at older work and then see the progress along the way as you post often. So with sharing your work uh, comes also, for example, like doing things daily or more on a consistent basis. So for example, for about three years, I have been using Houdini almost every single day. And that really helps with learning it more and more. So of course, a big part of that is side projects. So even though I was, for example, working at, at Exim, it was not like every day I used Houdini. Like sometimes I just had to build uh, different levels, environments for the game. So I had to work more in Unity than in other software. Uh, so then I, in my free time, I wanted to learn or explore areas of Houdini that I did not know before. So on side projects, I had then the freedom to research and build whatever I want. And again, like for example, the first house generator was as a side project. Two other side projects, which you can still see on ArtStation Twitter, like all of these uh, posts there are side projects. So some advantages of working daily is that you could learn faster. Uh, and everything, for example, so you could stay a bit more fresher in your mind. Like if you, for example, take longer breaks, like a week or multiple weeks, you might start forgetting things that you previously know, and then you have to sort of like recap or look into the files or research or go back to a certain website or tutorial to find out what information uh, you did, you forgot about, and so on. This also reminds me of a video from Andrew Denderguru, which has talked about growing as an artist before. And I highly recommend you watching these videos. Uh, he also did a revisit on that. And he just mentions a lot of interesting things like daily work and other interesting points, which I think are very interesting uh, to hear and learn about. And this is where I want to end this video. So I hope that there is some interesting information here for you and that this might be even helpful to some of you. So feel free to like, subscribe, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.